Hey everyone, welcome back to DSP Lectures. In this video, we will see three questions based on the topics we have studied so far. All the questions will be based on odd and even sequences which we studied in lecture 4. So, let's start our lecture. The first question is let g of n and h of n be even and odd real sequences respectively. Okay, so g of n is even which means g of n is equal to g of minus n. Also, h of n is odd. Therefore, h of n is equal to minus of h of minus n. For those who are unfamiliar with even and odd sequences, Please check out lecture 4 of our DSP lecture series where we are explaining the topic in detail. Ok now coming back to our question. For each of the following sequences, determine if it is even or odd. The first sequence given is x of n is equal to g of n into g of n. Let us write that again. x of n is equal to g of n into g of n. Therefore, x of minus n is equal to g of minus n into g of minus n. But we know that g of minus n is equal to g of n. So, this is equal to g of n into g of n and from here we can see that g of n into g of n is equal to x of n. So, this is equal to x of n. So we have x of minus n is equal to x of n. This is a property of even sequences. So x of n is an even sequence. Also we can generalize this concept as the product of two even sequences is always even. Now let us move to the second subpart u of n is equal to g of n into h of n. Let me write that down. u of n is equal to g of n into h of n. Proceeding like before, u of minus n is equal to g of minus n into h of minus n. And we know that g of minus n is equal to g of n. Therefore, g of n into h of minus n. From this equation we can write h of minus n is equal to minus h of n. So h of minus n is equal to minus h of n which is equal to minus of g of n into h of n. And we know that g of n into h of n is u of n. So this is equal to minus u of n. So we have minus u of n is equal to u of minus n. This is a property of odd sequences. So u of n is odd. Also in general we can say the product of an even and odd sequence is always odd. Now coming to the last subpart we have b of n is equal to h of n into h of n. Just like before, let us see what is v of minus n. So, v of minus n is equal to h of minus n into h of minus n. And we know that h of minus n is equal to minus h of n. So, this is equal to minus h of n into minus h of n which will be h of n into h of n which is nothing but v of n. So we have v of n is equal to v of minus n. Therefore v of n is an even sequence. v of n is an even sequence. To generalize we can say that the product of two odd sequences is always even. Okay. Now let's see the second question. Show that even and odd parts of a real sequence are 
respectively even and odd sequences this is a very simple question we learned in lecture 4 that the even part of a real sequence x of n is given by xc of n equal to half times x of n plus x of minus n so xc of minus n will be half times x of minus n plus x of minus of minus n which will be half times x of minus n plus x of n and this is equal to x c of n which is equal to x c of n so in short we have x c of minus n equal to x c of n this is the property of an even signal so we proved that the even part of a real sequence is an even sequence similarly we will proceed for the odd part we know that x o of n is equal to half times x o of n minus x o of minus n so x o of minus n is equal to half times x o of minus n minus x o of minus of minus n which is half times x of minus n minus x of n or minus half times x of n minus x of minus n and this is equal to this which is equal to x o of n therefore this is equal to minus of x o of n so we have x o of minus n is equal to minus of x o of n or x o of n is equal to minus of x o of minus n therefore we have proved that the odd part of a real sequence is an odd sequence so that completes this question now moving to the next question let x c of n and x o of n denote the even and odd parts of a square summable sequence x of n respectively prove the following result sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n squared equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to infinity x c of n squared plus sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x o of n squared okay to start with we know x o of n is equal to x c of n plus x o of n right we learned this in lecture 4 let us now square on both sides of the equation so we have x o of n squared equal to x c of n plus x o of n the whole squared which will be x c of n squared plus x o of n squared plus 2 times x c of n into x o of n taking summation on both sides we have sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x o of n squared equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x c of n squared plus sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x o of n squared plus 2 times sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x c of n into x o of n right now in the first example we showed that the product of an even and odd sequence is odd so x c of n into x o of n will give some odd sequence say y o of n which is equal to x c of n into x o of n 
here we are taking the summation of x c of n into x o of n from n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. So we can write sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x c of n into x o of n which is equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity y o of n because we have assumed x c of n into x o of n is equal to y o of n which will be from minus infinity to plus y of minus 3 plus y of minus 2 plus y of minus 1 plus y of 0 plus y of 1 plus y of 2 plus y of 3 plus etc. Also we know the property of odd signals that y o of minus n is equal to minus of y o of n. Therefore y o of minus 3 will be equal to y o of minus 3 will be equal to minus of y o of 3. Similarly y o of minus 2 will be equal to minus of y o of 2 y o of minus 1 is equal to minus of y o of 1 and so on. So this sequence becomes minus of y o of 3 sorry there was not under all y because we are taking the summation of y o of n. So we have minus of y o of 2 due to this equation minus of y o of 1 due to this equation plus y o of 0 plus y o of 1 plus y o of 2 plus y o of 3 plus etc. So these terms cancel out. So the only term left will be y o of 0. We also learned that the 0th sample of an odd sequence has to be 0 because say the value of 0th sample was non-zero. Say y of 0 was 10. Then as per this equation we have y o of minus 0 equal to minus of y o of 0 which will be 10 equal to minus 10. But this can't happen. So this is a fallacy. So like we said before the 0th sample y o of 0 equal to x c of 0 into x o of 0 will be equal to 0. That is this summation is equal to 0. Therefore this term will be 0. So our equation reduces to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x of n squared equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x c of n squared plus sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x o of n squared. This is what was asked to prove in the question and we have done that. That's all for this lecture. I hope that all the concepts that were taught in this video are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either we or some other viewer will surely help you out. If you found the lecture useful, please like the video and also support us by subscribing to the channel. In the next video, we will see solved examples based on the topic of energy of sequences. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.